For this video, I wanted to go over and explain the difference between a Type 1 and a Type 2 hypervisor. So I began to create an illustration and decided that there's probably a better one out there already. So I just did a quick Google search and I found this article from 2010 published by ECN Magazine. So I'm going to use their illustrations uh, to describe the differences between these two different types of hypervisors. Uh, so a Type 2 we'll, we'll talk about first. It's probably the one that's easier for you to uh, start playing with and testing on your existing machine. So it would be a product such as VMware Workstation, the old VMware server, uh, it could be Oracle Box or uh, Oracle's Virtual Box or Microsoft's Virtual PC, uh, it could be Parallels Boot Camp if you're in the Mac environment. So the way that would work is you would have your hardware, so that would be your computer, you know, with the the motherboard, the RAM, the hard drive, all of that you would install an operating system so that would be your Windows, your Linux or your Mac OS, whatever you have you would install that and that's how you would normally operate your computer where we see these uh, things App 1, App 2, that's just saying any programs that you may install so say you install Microsoft Office and you install Photoshop and you install you know, some game that you want to do here. So you can install all of those things and it doesn't affect anything that we're going to look at with our hypervisor. So we see this this, uh, this block here that says hypervisor. This is our type 2 hypervisor. And you say, well, what makes it a type 2? Well, what makes it a type 2 is that it's running on top of this operating system. It's not interacting directly with the hardware. So it's counting on this operating system, your host OS, to interact with the hardware. So whatever, whatever the hypervisor goes through, it has to go through the host OS to get to the hardware. It doesn't communicate directly with it. There's, a, there's an extra layer there. Uh, so what you would do with your hypervisor, say we'll, in this example we'll say uh, VMware Workstation. Uh, so you would install VMware Workstation, that would become your Type 2 hypervisor. Then you would install whatever guest operating system you would like. So it could be another copy of Windows 7, it could be um, you know any Linux distribution, any other Windows, um, some Unix, uh, things like that. Uh, it's possible to do Mac, but it's pretty hard and, and it's not always completely legal. Uh, so we'll just say we'll stick to you know Windows, Linux, maybe even Unix. So you would install that, and then in here it would work as a uh, unaware that it is a virtual machine. So it would just work just the same as your host OS. But what's really happening anytime that you need to do anything with hardware, you save a file or you move the mouse or you install a new application. What's really happening is it's going through the hypervisor. The hypervisor is communicating to the host, which then communicates to the hardware. It happens, you know, fairly quickly, but there's some extra overhead and there's an extra layer here. So let's look at the Type 1 hypervisor. So a Type 1 hypervisor, you you see that we're, we don't have that extra layer of a host operating system. There is no host operating system. Uh, this is a Type 1, or it's called bare metal. Uh, it's called bare metal because the hypervisor sits directly on the host hardware. Um, so the way that one works is it you install all of your operating systems and you just communicate straight from the hypervisor, which is usually a really lightweight uh, install, a little lightweight piece of software. The, the great thing about that is you don't have the overhead of that extra layer and you don't have as much uh, code, much as much things going on to try to secure here. So some examples of a Type 1 hypervisor are Zen, that's uh, the open source hypervisor that a good bit of the virtualization is based on Zen, uh, but some of the other ones that we'll talk about are uh, Microsoft Hyper-V or VMware ESXi. So all of those are type 1 hypervisors and so the, the difference is in type 2 you have a host operating system and then you install what's essentially a program 
and that program becomes your type 2 hypervisor and a type 1 situation the hypervisor is installed directly uh, to the hardware there's no uh, operating system that you boot into uh, typically what you're doing is you're not even managing this so uh, an example is for uh, VMware ESXi what you would do is you can actually install the hypervisor on a just a small USB thumb drive uh, directly to the motherboard so there's you would get a motherboard with a place to install your ESXi and you can install it directly there and it can run from a little thumb drive uh, then when you boot to the screen there's nothing more than an IP address and some really basic configuration information then you would actually manage that that virtual virtual server to install all of your operating systems through a client called vSphere so that's how that one works uh, but the, the main thing the main point of this little tutorial is to explain the difference between a type 1 and a type 2 hypervisor and usually when you're learning about these you'll probably learn about the type 2 before you learn about the type 1 uh, just because type 2 is a little easier to get a grasp of and uh, for you to test out so that's it I hope you enjoyed this and found this uh, tutorial helpful uh, looking at the differences between a type 1 and type 2 hypervisor and again this article was from ECN magazine and it looks like the the author was uh, using so thank you and have a great day